This video is brought to you by Envato Elements. In this video, we're gonna talk about how to effectively color grade a short film. Hey, what's going on internet? This is Josh Noel from Sunduck Film. So earlier this week, we posted a short film called Memories right here on the channel produced uh, by me and my team. And if you wanna check that film out, go ahead and check it out. It's the links in the description. However, in this tutorial, we're gonna talk about how to effectively color grade a short film using uh, the software DaVinci Resolve, which is absolutely free and it's also the industry standard for color grading. So in this video, I'm gonna give you several of my secret tips to do awesome color grading that I apply to all of my projects. Boom, here we are inside of DaVinci Resolve and we're here inside the color tab and my techniques are gonna show you how to create any type of image with color grading and correction. So this is the image that we're gonna create and I wanna start completely from scratch. So when you're first starting off, the only thing you're gonna have is one serial node and if you're new to DaVinci Resolve, the first thing that I like to do is create four separate nodes right off the rip. So we already have one and you can create a new node, you go up to color nodes and you add a serial node. You you're gonna wanna remember the shortcut and I automatically add four. These are my four color correction uh, nodes that I work with right away. So the first thing I like to do is go here to the third node and if you're new to DaVinci Resolve, nodes are essentially like layers like in any other editing program, they're just called nodes. And basically, essentially the top layers are the, you know, the later nodes in the node graph. So a node three, what I like to do is increase the contrast right away. I like to see our image right off the bat. I like to see that, you know, pumped up, you know, usually to about 1.4, depending on, you know, the camera that I'm working with. And you take a look at the scopes, what happens here, you know, get obviously a lot more contrast and nothing is black here and nothing is, you know, blown out. So contrast is the first thing I do. So when I have my contrast pumped up, I click on my first node and this is where I kind of balance out the image kind of adjust the exposure. So I do that by essentially only using the gamma wheel right here. And I'm gonna bring this up by a little bit cause it's just a little bit underexposed just by a touch. And that kind of helps things out just by a little bit. Uh, sometimes I might adjust the gain if you know, the highlight's a little bit too bright. So, you know, for this case, I'll just go down just by a little bit. And I usually don't touch the lift. Um, I use that in the fourth node. So now we have our exposure where I want it to be. And of course, if you want to check your exposure a little bit more other than using scopes here, uh, one thing you can do is you can download a free plugin for DaVinci Resolve or any editor called False Color from timeandpixels.com. I'll hopefully remember to link that in the description. And this will cool little tool and show you where your exposure is at. And this is really what I'm exposing for here on the left and right side. And it's exactly where our skin needs to be. It's you know not above 70 IRE which is essentially where you want to keep skin for, you know, for people with light skin, or at least you don't want to go over that too much. After my image is exposed to where I want it to be, I'm going to come to the second node and this is where I start balancing out the color of the image. So we've already have our contrast in here. We have the exposure. So we kind of have an idea where our color is going to be. And then I switch here to the parade so I can see our colors here and if I look in the parade you can see the colors are not balanced out now sometimes depending on the type of mood I am I will balance these out or if I know exactly what look I'm going for sometimes I will actually start baking in some of the image here I don't suggest that that's not real color correction but that's just one of my preferences so the first thing I do is I click on this tab here called primary bars you can just do the drop down go to primary bars and this is where you adjust your color so I go to the gamma part and I come here to blue and I usually just bring this down by a little bit and you see how it kind of shifts the data down by a touch um, and it adds a little bit more touch of green to it um, and just kind of playing with each of these parameters until I got an image that is very close to what I want or usually a little bit closer to being balanced out and then when my gamma is good I kind of move over to the lift a little bit kind of bring that down by a touch and just you know, getting that thing as close to neutral as I can. And I would say that's good enough. So a little before and after, you can see that the original image was a little bit more purpley blue. And now it's a lot more, you know, on the neutral side, the skin tones are a lot more accurate. So just a little before and after, you know, the skin tones before just too blue. Now it's a little bit more uh, neutral and that's where we want it to be. And usually when I color correct, I always color correct for the skin. You know, that's usually the most important part is the people in the shot, unless you're doing like food or whatever. So I'm happy with our initial color correction here in our first three nodes. Then I'm gonna move over to our fourth node and this is where I work with the blacks. 
and I work with the blacks by going to our drop down here from the primary bars and I go right to log and this is where you get shadow midtone highlight instead of you know left gamma gain so in the log window I go right to shadow and it's important that we take a look at our waveform here and check out the bottom so our blacks are about around 100 IRE here if I bring down the shadows I can just easily you know have that touch about zero now this is typically what I will do on most clips, but for this particular image, I don't want to crush the blacks all the way. I just want to have a little bit more contrast in the blacks. So this is a good way to easily control where you want to put the black so you can put it all the way at zero. If you want, do not go past zero or you're going to really start breaking some film rules there and you don't want to do that. So this, is, this should be all right for what I want to do. I can always revisit this a little bit later. So this is essentially our color correction and now we can start grading. My grading process is very simple. And before we jump further into our video, I want to talk to you about Envato Elements. You know what I dislike as a content producer? Having to spend hundreds of dollars a month to purchase stock footage, music for my videos, After Effects templates, and graphic design templates for my business. With Envato Elements, I can save a ton of money for my business by spending only $16.50 a month where I can download unlimited music, After Effects templates, stock footage, and so much more for my business needs. If you want to learn how you can save countless time and money, be sure to check our links in the video description, which will take you over to Envato Elements. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to create a new node. Then I'm going to go back to these nodes and I'm going to add a layer node. And we're going to have these two right here that we're going to work with right now. So what I like to do in the bottom node here, which is 07 in my case, is I like to click on this tool right here called the qualifier and make sure it's selected right there. You can see it's highlighted. Then what I do, the first thing I do is I select someone's face. I select the main character in the shot's face. Then I can click on this highlight wand right here at the top and we see what is selected. Everything that's in the gray is deselected and everything that's that we can see is selected. Then we come here to the selection range and grab the you know qualifier plus tool and I can start selecting some of the other skin that was not added in our shot. And this is a great example of a shot not going to only select the skin, usually on some shots you're going to be able to just select the skin only in this case we have a lot of similar pixels and it's going to be a little bit of an issue but we have some tools down here that we can fine tune so under the saturation window there's a tab here called low I can kind of bring that up by a little bit see what happens and it's not really going to work sometimes that does one thing I'll do right off the rip though is increase the blur radius maybe by a lot like a hundred increase the clean white and then increase the clean black and then I'll start messing with some of these tools here, like the width of the hue, kind of see if we can close that up by a little bit and see if we can de deselect some of the extra pixel groups in here. You know, it's really just going to have to be a trial and error and see what works. And sometimes you just can't get around it. And this is essentially where I can create mask and only select the skin. I don't want to do that. So let's just say this is the best that we can do and select. Now, if our skin selected, what we can do here is come right here to the gamma window and I'll actually come here and click on the uh, vector scope. So we have our scopes here. We can see where our data is at and it's definitely you know above where it needs to be so grab our gamma and we can kind of just shift it over by a little bit and you know kind of just keep that very easy in there and i'll go ahead and deselect this so a little before and after is very subtle i'll just zoom in there you can see the skin went from more of a magenta you know pinkish to more of a very neutral you know more on the green yellow side and you know that's really where the skin needs to be according to the vector scope but there's a skin tone line now what's cool about this since i have the skin selected i can click, go to the top node here and this is the part that's awesome i can grab our gamma here or any of our other color wheels and i can move this over so i can make the background and all the other assets other than the skin a little bit more blue or a little bit more warm or whatever we're trying to do now don't go crazy with that but just a touch the blue is going to make a huge difference and then also we can bring down the saturation that's also an awesome tool right there and, and now if i just show you before and after just a huge difference you know the mood has com been completely changed it's very subtle and that's what we went for in this film we wanted this scene to be nothing crazy you know and that's what we got very subtle and that's primarily where i'll do a lot of my grading separating the grade from the skin now, if you want to take the grade even further, we can create another serial node and we can simply just come here to lift gamma gain and just mess with the color wheels. If you just want to kind of bake more of a grade in there, 
and just move those around. I feel like for this shot, the image has already been put together, so I don't have to do that. So just up to you. And for the last technique that we're going to apply to our color grade here that you should do on every color correction is you go from here to the curves graph and you click on the fifth uh, dot here, which is going to bring you to Luma versus Sat. And what we want to do is click on the black and the white points, and this will add two points here, and we'll bring the black all the way down to black and the white all the way down to white. So essentially we get this curve like this. And what's happening here is, is that we're telling our clip that we want black to be black and white to be white instead of black being like have a touch of blue in it. You know, that's a little bit more amateur. And this way, you know, uh, we know black is black. And we can, of course, bring this in a little bit so we don't, you know, take out all the colors in the black area and that just that allows us to keep our image a lot more neutral so how does this stack up compared to other shots so let's come here and grab our still here and this will allow us to apply this to other shots so I'll come here and grab say like another shot in the sequence which this is a lot different this is a different you know POV character and we did some few other things here but for the general gist of this I'm gonna reset this and I'm gonna apply our color grade and depending on how well you do your lighting and camera and how the shots match you know, you might have to fine tune some things. Sometimes you just drop the, you know, the color correction on from the last clip and it looks great. Sometimes you might have to go into these four nodes and change certain things. So, for example, I might need to just readjust the color a little bit and I might be ready to go. I might need to just adjust the exposure to balance everything out correctly. Uh, but this is essentially where you would just change your color correction and then your grade should be fine. But there's always some fine tuning and other things you might want to do. I might want to select this wall and you know, make it you know, a little bit more blue. But essentially this format allows me to be focused on a very few nodes. I'm not going crazy with it and I know where everything's at and I can easily adjust the image as I move forward. And with this format, you'll be able to easily color grade any sort of clip without going crazy. Over here, you can see I'm only using four nodes, which is essentially the balances and just a quick, you know, little color grade using the color wheels. So those are my thought processes when I color grade a short film. Of course, if you're new to DaVinci Resolve or you haven't used it yet, be sure to check that out. It's absolutely free and is one of the best color grading software on the market. Definitely allows you to color grade very efficiently, get things done a lot quicker, uh, and it's just a lot of fun to use. So I hope you guys enjoyed this tutorial. If you did, be sure to subscribe to our YouTube channel, Sunduck Film. We post two post-production tutorials every single week right here on the channel. You can also hit me up on my social media networks. Those links are in the video description and always be creative.